Hi everyone. Today we're going to be making this card using products from Kitchen Sink Stamps. Let's get started. This is the stamp set. It's called Multi-Layer Guitar. It features this acoustic guitar, musical notes, and some great sentiments. I also have Coffee Break and the Delectable Delights ink sets from Altenew. I also grabbed a gray set, which I did not end up using. When you receive your products from Kitchen Sink Stamps, they are packaged with a protective acetate on both sides. And then this printed piece of clear acetate, which features all of the stamps. And what you need to do is turn that over. So you have the back side and then transfer all of your little stamps, all of your stamps over to this film. Um, it's an identification film. It is printed with a laser. Um, if you actually end up putting the sentiments on the other side, which is the front side, uh, you run the risk of that transferring and pulling the um, printed image up and transferring onto your stamp. So that's why you want to put everything on the back side. Um, this is a great way to keep your stamps stored and uh, use your ID film as a reference because as you can see it has colors so it actually gives you some ideas or suggestions for what color inks to use when you do your stamping. So you'll see this guitar has sort of a cream colored ink and then a black ink and then a brown ink. So it's a really handy product that is included in your stamp set. It comes with every stamp set. And also each stamp set includes a stamp alignment guide, which is a printed set of instructions. Here it is. This is the stamp alignment guide to help you know which points on the stamps to pay special attention to as you're doing your alignment. Now this guitar is pretty easy. It's, I would say, a beginner's level stamp <laughs> as far as kitchen sink stamps. Now I am going to start with layer one. Now you can do it in reverse if you'd like, starting with layer four, which is your darkest, most detailed layer. But as I said, I'm going to start with layer one. This is the uh, guitar and I'm going to be using Altenew Vanilla Cream Ink. And I'm just basically trying to match my inks with what is close to that um, pre-printed uh, ID film. Okay, I'm going to speed things up here for the sake of time so the video is not too long. I do not work this fast in real life. I... I go ahead and ink it twice because it seems that the stamp is not making a good impression on that top right hand side. Oh, and then I realized that magnet is probably interfering with me being able to get a good impression. So for my next stamp, I actually move that magnet, but in the end it works out just fine. So next we're going to use layer two which has a little bit more detail than layer one. You're starting to see the strings on the guitar and the fret and the other parts of the body of the guitar. And using a stamp alignment guide is really quite helpful when you're doing multi-layer stamps. Now I have hazelnut ink from Altenew. I'm going to use that for layer two. The stamp alignment, I mean the stamping positioning tool, this one is a stamp apparatus from stamping up. It definitely helps you get things um, straight and make sure that you have good alignment. Yeah, I moved that magnet because it was getting in the way of me getting a good impression in that top right hand corner. Okay, now we're moving on to layer three and I used almond butter ink, which is from Altenew. You see, I'm paying special attention to the top part of the guitar. I want those little keys to be lined up quite 
nicely. I think that that's an important detail on this stamp set. So if you do use it, please pay special attention to that area. This is layer three and I'm using mocha. So I jumped over to the coffee break dye ink set. The first two inks were from the Delectable Delights set and the second two are from the coffee break. Uh, and then my final layer I'm using espresso. So that final layer is nice. It's nice and dark and it brings out the definition of the guitar. Doesn't that look like a real guitar? It's just amazing how these multi-layer stamp sets from kitchen sink stamps look so realistic. Off camera, I actually stamped another guitar using only the Coffee Break inks from Altenew. I just wanted to show you that as a comparison. When you get these stamps, play with them. Use different color inks. Give it a try. You'll be surprised at how you can use various combinations to come up with some beautiful images. Okay, speaking of beautiful images, I have some foil here from H&H Foil, and then underneath the foil, I have some of the digi backgrounds from Kitchen Sink Stamps. Kitchen Sink Stamps has a great variety of digital backgrounds. I will include a video at the end of this video with a link to um, how I use these background files and make them different sizes for my projects. The set that I'm showing you right now is called Bold and Wild and it has paisleys, stars, polka dots, a flower, tile, bubbles and checks backgrounds. Then here are the musical notes. These are from the Tis the Season set. I did actually make them different sizes as far as the musical notes. Uh, but what I'm going to foil here is actually the musical notes because the more I looked at them, the more I thought they would be really nice for this card. So let's go ahead and foil these notes up. For my first panel, I will use this red foil that has stars, so it looks real sparkly. And our, my, all of my foil is from H&H &H Foil. Um, actually, I did two panels with the red sparkly stars. And I'm using a mini mink machine, and I have it set on number four as far as the heat settings. And this turned out really nice. I'm really pleased with the red musical notes. They look great. Um, I'm using transfer folders, which are made for mink by mink. So they're called Heidi Swap transfer folders. They are not the same as a lamination pouch. So don't use a laminator pouch. Now let's go ahead and use some blue sparkly foil. Uh, this is again from H and H it's blue and it's got stars in it, which makes it really sparkly. You want to have a soft brush that you keep dedicated solely for your foiling. You want to take that brush and dust the panel as well as the backside of the foil. This will eliminate any dust that might be on your foil, your um, project as well. A lot of times our fingers leave marks. So we have like natural oils in our fingers, but also we might touch something on the craft desk and then touch our foil and then we're putting dust on there. We don't want any dust. Dust is the enemy of foil. Just remember that. So I'm using my dusty, dusty brush and then I'm lining up the foil and the image that I'm going to foil using um, that transfer folder. And by the way, all of my images were printed on a laser printer. You cannot use inkjet when it comes to this. But this is that blue and it's so pretty. I just love it. Yes, you have to use a laser printer because the um, foil will then adhere to that heated up toner and that's what makes the foiling work. This one is a striation. It's got red and silver and gold in it and I use that on one of these panels just to see what it would look like. Now this one is a rainbow foil from Crafty Krita and I'm just using my trimmer as you can see 
just to trim all of my foil. I find this is an easier method than scissors. When I use scissors, it gets really crooked and I just end up having problems when I go to run it through my mink machine because my edges are uneven. All right, so this one I'm going to use a different one. It's called Shattered Glass, but it's blue. Isn't it beautiful? Look at all those faceted sparkles. You can see that that's just a gorgeous foil. I'll go ahead and dusty dusty and slide this into a transfer folder. I'll have a link below where you can find the transfer folders as well as a link to H and H foil and crafty Krita for their foil. All right, let's run this through and let's do a reveal of the rainbow. Oh, this is my mini mink machine. I want you to see what it looks like. I want you to see what it looks like when the transfer folder goes through. If you don't have a transfer folder, you can use a piece of paper or a piece of parchment. This rainbow panel turned out really nice. I'm really pleased with it. Okay, let's do our final reveal. And wow, what a beautiful panel. Look at that sparkle. I really like this one. This is the one that is the original size from Kitchen Sink Stamps. As far as the background panel, I didn't do anything to make it smaller. You can see in these panels that I actually made the musical notes a little bit smaller. I basically resized them. Again, I'll have a video at the end of this video that, um, explains that process. I'll also have it linked below. And this is me just trying to figure out which panel I want to use. Okay, so I used the SVG cut files that come with the stamp set. When you purchase your stamps, and by the way, this is make a big statement stamp set. It has some great sentiments for all occasions. Everything from thank you to happy birthday to Congratulations, get well, miss you. When you purchase your stamps, you wanna make sure you select the SVG cut files. If you have a machine that can cut, so for example, a Cricut or a Scan and Cut, you're able to cut the, what I call the background of the sentiment. I have here in my Stamparatus a jig. So basically the, um, the sentiments I cut out and then I pop them back inside the actual area where they were cut out. And I'm just using Catherine Puller inks. The first I used was something borrowed. And this second one that I'm using is called suede shoes. So I'm just trying to figure out which color blue do I want for my project. And I'm leaning towards the one on the right because it's sapphire and it matches the foiled background. Now I'm going to pull the paper up and you're going to see how it's a jig where I just notched those SVG files, just tuck them right in there and they fit in there perfectly. And that helps me to align my sentiments. So yeah, the SVG cut files are free if you put them in your cart when you check out. If you forget to do that and you want to purchase them later, you have to pay 99 cents for that SVG file. All right, I'm using something borrowed to stamp my second sentiment, which says, make your own music. And this sentiment comes from the guitar stamp set, which has a lot of great sentiments. Um, so I thought I would use that. Now I'm going to use stitch rectangle dies to trim some blue, actually a sapphire blue foil paper, as well as to trim the panel that I foiled with that blue stars foil. So that's the one that I end up using for this card. So please give this video a thumbs up if you like my card. This is my son's birthday card. He'll be 17 years old on February the 2nd and he plays the guitar as well as the electric guitar. So I thought this would be a nice card to help inspire him to keep playing his music. If you're new to my channel, I'd love it if you would subscribe and ring the bell so that you're notified of all of my future videos. And hey, everybody, please leave a comment. I love it when you leave a comment. I love to interact with you. It just really makes my day. 
Thanks so much for watching. Have a hopeful day. Bye-bye.